costs. Now, when we talk about cost, I have to introduce a few cost concepts. To begin with, the cost object. The cost object is anything, anything for which I want to accumulate costs. It could be the cost of paving a highway for a kilometer, a cost of uh, a hotel room, anything. For example, here I'm going to say I'm manufacturing this office desk. And I'm going to accumulate the cost to manufacture that desk. Now, I must distinguish those costs that are direct to my cost object from those that are indirect. Now, a direct cost is a cost that can be traced to the cost object and measured exactly as being consumed by the cost object. An example here would be the wood. I can see that the wood is directly related to my cost object, the desk. And I can measure exactly how much of it has been consumed, used in the production of that desk. So that would be a direct cost. Now, in cost of manufacturing, there are many costs that are indirect, like electricity uh, for the saw that cut the wood, things like that, the glue that's in this product. Those costs were necessary to produce the desk, but they are by no means easy to measure. So they would be called indirect. So there are two definitions of cost, a direct cost and an indirect cost. Now, for a manufacturing company, we have a lot of costs. So we're going to use manufacturing company here as an example. A manufacturing company manufactures the product they sell. And therefore, those costs are called manufacturing costs. And again, if I'm using my desk, I produced that desk in a factory, in a plant. I paid the rent on that, I paid for the utilities, I paid for a lot of costs. Now we can distinguish those costs that are direct and indirect, but we also want to categorize them. And there are three categories of manufacturing costs, direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Now direct material is material that has been used in the consumption of producing my desk that I can measure. Direct labor is that labor that was directly associated with the manufacturer of my desk. That is somebody cut it and we know how long it took them to cut it and we know exactly what we pay them on an hourly basis. So that would be considered direct labor. The third category is manufacturing overhead and the definition for this category is all other manufacturing costs that are not direct material and not direct labor. So you see, they would be all indirect costs, costs such as utility costs, costs such as supervisor costs, costs like facility costs, rent, cost of depreciation on machinery. All of these costs are necessary to produce my product, my cost object, but I cannot measure exactly how much was used. So to begin with, we talk with direct materials. So notice the terminology. Direct materials are those materials directly related to the production of my desk. I can measure them. They're also, before I begin production of them, they're called raw materials. The raw materials are the basic materials that form part of the manufacturing process. Now the direct materials are the ones that I can physically and directly associate with the finished product during the manufacturing process. If I cannot measure it exactly, like glue and so on, or it's not physically part of the finished product, like a, a, a wrap, uh, I wrap my product, these costs are indirect material costs, and they're actually categorized as manufacturing overhead. The second category is direct labor. That is the labor of the factory employee that can be physically and directly associated with taking the, the raw material and converting it into a finished goods. Now, there are many people on the shop floor who are necessary to produce this, but are not necessarily directly related with the production. The forklift driver, the supervisor, even the janitor who cleans the floor, he's part of the process. But his labor costs are not direct labor. They're all indirect to the manufacturing 
of the product. And therefore, the manufacturing overhead, the third cost category, are all those costs that are indirectly associated with manufacturing the finished products, except direct materials and direct labor. These costs are also known as burden costs or factor costs, but I will be using the term manufacturing overhead. Now, there's another distinction, and this is a very, very important distinction for a manufacturing company, and that is the difference between a product cost and a period cost. The issue here is the cost of inventory. If I was merchandising these desks, that is, I was a merchandise company, I bought in the desk and I sold it. I didn't manufacture it, I purchased it. So I know exactly how much I paid for that desk. So I know the cost of my inventory. But for a manufacturer, they do not know the cost. For, they're manufacturing their finished goods. And they start off with raw material and they convert it to a finished good. So we must distinguish those costs to manufacture my product from all the other costs that are incurred in a manufacturing company such as selling and administration costs and HR and perhaps IT. This distinction is important. Product costs, the three cost categories, direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, are the components of a product cost, and they are an integral part of producing my product. So they're inventory. These costs are also called inventoriable costs because they form the part, they, they all form the cost of my inventory. An inventory is an asset carried on my balance sheet. It doesn't become an expense until I expense it as the cost of goods sold on the income statement. So you see, these costs are not expenses. They are the cost to produce my inventory. All other costs, the selling and administration costs, delivery costs, all of those uh, costs have nothing to do with the manufacture of my product. They're called period costs because they are expensed during the accounting period. So you see all the costs in a company are either product costs, which are direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead, or non-manufacturing costs, which are selling and general administration costs.
Now, uh, produce the, there are three types of inventory for a manufacturer then. In a merchandise company, you only had one type of inventory, merchandise inventory. But for a manufacturer, we have three, the raw material and finished goods and the material that is being produced on the shop floor that's no longer raw material, but it's not finished, it's not completed, so it's called work in process. Here I put together, uh, assume this is a whole building manufacturing plant and I've taken off the roof and you can see at the front, when you walk into the, the front of a manufacturing building, what you're met with is a display of the products they produce. You're probably approached by a salesperson. So the sales and marketing people are in the front office. Same with the president and other general administration people. They are all in the front office. So they're period costs. They have nothing to do with the manufacturer. Now, when you walk from the front office and into the factory plant, it looks very confusing unless you know what you're looking at. And it all starts at the back, the receiving dock, where raw material is delivered to the back door of the plant. And it's stored there. And somebody keeps a record of everything that is in what's called stores. It's raw material stores. It's inventory. Then on the shop floor, there's a whole series of machines. There'll be a center for cutting, another area for drilling. There might be another one for gluing a whole series of operations. So these machines are all in a circle or in a certain area, all doing basically the same job. And of course, there'd be an area for assembly. Now, once somebody starts the production of a product, they requisition material from stores, they will go to the cutting area and cut it, and they will keep track of the amount of time they spend on it. So we know how much material they took and we know how much time was spent in the cutting. Then when it moves to the drilling area, it would move with that card. And on the card, the person who spent time in the drilling area on it would record their time. The same when it goes to the assembly. Now all the time the product is on the shop floor, that's called work and process. Because that's inventory, but it's no longer raw material because we've worked on it. We started to convert it. And it's not a finished goods because it's not completed. After we assemble it, we move it to finished goods. So you see all this dark blue area up until finished goods storage are all product costs, all costs necessary to produce that product. The rent on the factory building, the utilities, all the depreciation on the equipment, all the people working on the shop floor, um, who are either direct labor or indirect labor, they're all product costs. And when it's finished, that's the end of it. It's delivered. Any costs after that are period costs. So we have to know how much it costs to produce our product because we're going to be selling that product and we're in competition with other people. And the better we understand our cost of producing, the better we can set our selling price and of course, earn a profit. So that's why the distinction between a product cost and period cost is so very important here. Now, we're on a periodic inventory system, so when we produce the cost of goods sold, um, for a manufacturer, we have a cost of goods manufacturing statement that is part of it, whereas a merchandiser has the cost of goods purchased. Our income statement then, the cost of goods sold is finished goods inventory beginning plus the cost of goods manufactured gives us cost of goods available for sale. Less finished goods inventory gives me the cost of goods sold. All right. For a merchandiser, then it was just the cost of goods purchased. So in a manufacturing company, we start off with beginning work and process. We add the total manufacturing costs, which is direct material, direct labor, and overhead. And that gives us the total cost of the work that's on the shop floor called in process. Then we simply determine at the end of the accounting period how much is left unfinished. We subtract that and we have the cost of goods manufactured. This is what the statement actually looks like. 
It may look confusing, but it's not. It begins at the top with work in process January 1st. This was started the previous year, but not finished. To that, we add direct materials. We don't know exactly how much we added, but we do know what we started off with. We do know how much we purchased, and we know how much is left December 31st. So we can determine the direct material used. And then we have direct labor. You see that in the second column, 175,600. And the manufacturing overhead. Notice the terms, indirect labor, factory repairs, factory utility, factory depreciation, factory insurance. All these costs would be indirect to the production of my product. So the total manufacturing overhead, 54.8. I totaled those three, the direct material, 146, 400, direct labor, 175, 600, and the manufacturing overhead, and I get the total manufacturing costs. I add that then to the cost of goods in process, beginning, and I get the total value of the goods on the shop floor. I subtract what's left, unfinished, and I have the cost of goods manufactured. So that's a complete manufacturing statement for a manufacturing company. And that's what we're talking about. Now, lastly, I want to introduce the idea of the value chain. I want you to think about the value chain when you think about a business, in this case, a manufacturing business. There are many different links in this chain. And of course, each chain is very important and adds value. Adds value to what? To the product or service we are producing for our customer. Now, it all starts with marketing research, and we design a product. So the research and development and designing is very important. Once that is completed, then there's the whole purchasing area. And the purchasing area, of course, we acquire the raw materials we need. Then there's a production area, which we were just talking about. Once we produce the product, then we sell it, then we deliver it, and then we follow up. Quality control will follow up and determine if the customer is satisfied.